Attention. Good evening. Uh, for those of you that don't know who I am, and probably at this point everybody does, I'm Mark Sandoval. I'm the Harbor Director. Not even a year yet. Two weeks short of a year. And uh, it's been a wonderful year. Uh, ups and downs, but um, definitely a wonderful location. And I've said it many, many times, and I'll say it while I'm here. This is a great, great harbor. I, I really, really love this harbor. I think it's got a lot of upside potential. Um, we talked a lot about it. Uh, before I get started, first, many, many thanks to the museum, to the Maritime Museum, for hosting us tonight. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful facility, wonderful speaker series. If you're not a, a, a member, I, I, I urge you to join. Uh, it's one of the first things my wife and I did was uh, as we became members of this of this uh, Maritime Museum. And, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're a member here, you can go to any other Maritime Museum. Just uh, show them your card. So, uh, I believe that's the case. <laughs> so welcome. Uh, if I can get a show of hands, if, it, if anybody here have been to all five? Very good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you being here tonight. For those of you that have made it to all five, thank you. Um, I, I really, really am excited about this topic, but more so that I can uh, introduce our, our, our PIO, our Public Information Officer for the Harbor Department, Jen Chernobyev. Jen. Not only is he going to give the presentation tonight, this is, his, this is in his wheelhouse, everything that we're going to be talking about um, is under Jen. He's been here since January of 2017. And from everything I've heard, I wasn't around then, as, as uh, you know, um, he's done a, just a, a wonderful job in taking the harbor department and the harbor from where it was prior to 2017 to where it is today. And, uh, and, and this is definitely not my area of expertise. Uh, I don't do Facebook. I've, I've just got into Instagram so I can see my granddaughter eat dinner every night. <laughs> but I, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy that, that, that you know has has the time nor the passion to do all the Twitters and Facebook. But, but I, like I said, I do do Instagram. But I do follow the Harbor. Um, I do a lot of posting. Um, but that's all Jed. And and in addition to what Jed does, and you'll find out tonight what he does. This was his idea. This Harbor Academy. Um, I've mentioned it at a couple of, of the, the Academy sessions that. Um, I challenged my staff when I got here, you know, a few months after I got here, that, that you know, that it, it seems like people I talked to really didn't have an idea as to who we were and what we did, and, and we needed to get the word out, and, and as a result, the Harbor Academy was developed, and it was uh, Jed's idea. He said, why don't we, you know, we hadn't named it at the time, he said, why don't we go out there and educate? Let's have public sessions, talk about different topics, and that's how the Harbor Department came about. So. So this uh, definitely the the uh, the seed for this was from Jed, and tonight is Jed's because it is it is what he does. So I'll get out of the way and uh, I'll just get it to Jed and uh, hope you enjoy. And, and if you have any questions, he's definitely going to stick around and I'll be here. But uh, but let me bring Jed up here. So, thank you. Static. Yeah, I got all those nice compliments on video. So. <laughs> I will be I will be keeping that forever. Well, thank you for coming, everybody. Um, like Mark said, Director Sandoval said, my name is Jed Chernobyev. I'm the Public Information Officer for the Harbor. And PIO in government land really means um, a crisis communicator, um, somebody who does a lot of public outreach. Um, in my previous positions, I, I did a lot of that crisis stuff. I worked for a fairly large school district, and I supported 108 principals with crisis communication. So when I came to the harbor in January 17, it was a little bit different. There was much more of a marketing flavor um, to the job, which um, I really um, enjoy, and I hope um, some of the work that we show you today kind of reflects that. Um, just to give a brief outline of our presentation, we're going to talk about our communications infrastructure to achieve some of our um, department goals. And when I talk about goals um, for the department, I'm really talking about raising awareness about the harbor as a whole, not necessarily our department. Um, we manage and provide oversight of annual public events. I'll go through the list of events that, um, that we cover. Uh, we manage media campaigns to promote harbor events, programs, and businesses. 
And we do have a variety of um, print and digital materials that we distribute. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our press and public inquiries, and then I'll share some results um, with you. So before we talk, go into the presentation, um, this is kind of the framework in which I operate as the marketing and promotions person for the harbor. Um, this is what, um, if you're not in business, this is the marketing funnel. So your marketing funnel starts with um, your awareness and your campaigns, and it leads down to sale and then repeat customers. And so the Harvard department um, believes that um, our role is really to generate awareness and attract people to the harbor so they go and they patronize a business. It's up to the business owner to give the customer a positive experience so they keep coming back. So everything that we're doing is really trying to build awareness of the harbor so we can get those bodies to businesses. And we do that through our events, our media campaigns, our digital, our print materials, um, press, website, social media, etc. So when we talk about our communications infrastructure to achieve our department objectives, we take a three-pronged approach. We have our website, we have our social media, and we have our advertising. And with um, our website, what we want to do is ensure access to information first, because there's a lot of a lot of the public wants to know about what's going on at at the harbor, and second, we want to raise awareness. And if you notice on the slide, I bolded raise awareness all three times because that's what we really focus on. Um, number two is our social media. We want to establish, maintain, and enhance the harbor's brand via social media. There's millions and millions of people on social media. Prior to 2017, the harbor didn't have a Facebook or a social media presence. And so when people are traveling, they often look to social media first to see what they're getting into when they visit a location. So we thought that having a good social media program would be beneficial to our businesses. And third, um, advertising. We distribute information and materials via media in an effort, again, to raise awareness. Now prior um, to me being here, there was already an advertising program um, that was in place. Um, I continue to manage it, but we really haven't expanded it um, since I've, I've gotten here. So the first topic that we're going to talk about is our um, annual public events. Now there's a variety of events that might be going on at individual businesses. Um, we don't, we're not involved in every little event, but we do have some signature events that um, attracts quite a bit of foot traffic to the harbor, as, as you know. Um, the first one is our tall ships visit that happens in the spring. Uh, the Graceport Historical Society um, schedules that annual visit. They go up and down the coast, and what we do is when they file their special activity permit with the Harbor Department, Gary lets me know, and then that's when we begin to um, share, share the visit with the public. We do that through social media and advertising. Uh, we have our Celebration of Wales Festival. Now, um, this past year, or prior to this year, um, before, the Maritime Museum was taking the lead of the past couple of years in that event. This year we decided to join in and partner with them and um, we tied in the farmer's market and marine emporium landing and the idea was um, to create a, a whale trail to connect the two centers so we get a lot of foot traffic. Oftentimes on, on weekend events people will visit one place and not um, explore the rest of the harbor. So the idea behind the migration trail was to get the regulars at the farmer's market to come down to the Maritime Museum and vice versa. So we're definitely looking forward to partnering with the Maritime Museum um, in future years and, and helping grow that event. We see that as a real potential for the harbor. The only other um, harbor on the west coast that does um, Wales Festival is Dana Point. So in Tulare County, I believe you know the harbor, the harbor can be the Wales Festival destination for this for this region. Um, we do have our contents by the sea that we manage. Um, that's going to start on July 6, July 6th from 4 to 6 at Peninsula Park. We bring in all the acts for that concert and we um, promote that as well. We have um, fireworks by the sea coming up and what we do with that is um, we put in money for the fireworks display that um, drives a lot of traffic down here to the harbor. Um, we have our, uh, our parade of lights in December. We uh, oversee the farmer's market, the Sunday farmer's market. 
Um, there are a variety of car shows that come into the harbor. We don't directly manage, but we help provide marketing support for those events. And we also have our fairy tales in the park. So the next topic is our uh, managed media campaigns to promote and build awareness of harbor events. We do that, as I mentioned, through social media. There's our um, social media channels. Um, our Facebook is for news and tourism. Our Instagram is kind of strictly tourism and not a lot of news. This is kind of the route that we're going with each channel. Um, our Twitter is a combination of both. And our next door it really is to provide information to the residents of the community. We don't promote a lot of events on next door, but when it, if there is a Harbor Department related activity, we, we're sure to um, post that information for, for the residents. We do have our print advertising Again, our website and our monthly um, newsletter that I'll get into a little bit down the road. So when we talk about um, media campaigns on a variety of channels, our biggest, one of our most successful channels that we use, or platforms that we use, is Facebook. How many have a Facebook account? Hands? How many people follow the harbor? Awesome. So what you're seeing here is, um, Channel Islands Pear Sale, they opened in October. We ran a campaign, what we wanted to do was um, post that information on our website. So on the left hand side, you'll see the blog that ran on the channelislandsharbor.org website. What we did is we posted a link to that on our Facebook page. And through our Facebook page, as you can see up here, we ended up reaching 7,800 people and we drove 108 people to our website to read more of the information about the story. And that's a, that's a significant advantage to the business because it's raising awareness about them opening and, um, and they're getting potential customers. I had a conversation with Dave a couple of weeks after and he ended up receiving 70 calls within the first two hours of this post. So this, is, this goes into that um, our mission of raising awareness about businesses. We get the information out about the businesses. It, it hopefully provides them some leads. Jen? Yes? <coughs> what type of calls were they? What, what were they inquiring? They were interested in um, going on the parasail. Yes. Um, one that's more recent, this isn't, well, I don't know if this was about Frank's business or it was about the bucks, but this was something, this was something that we posted well, Frank is a business owner. He's also a resident here at the harbor. He had something very interesting. I'm sure you guys have seen the H2O bus. And um, I, I deliver early directories. Uh, I have seen this, Frank. <laughs> it's a Frank from the office, and I can just cruise up and down the harbor area. Yeah, so Frank has been working on this the H2O bus for quite some time. And every quarter, I go around to local businesses and deliver um, quarterly directories. And Frank, you know, had it under wraps, and he said, hey, look what I'm doing, I'm working on this bus. I was like, great, that would be a great feature for our website. It kind of, you know, talks about the flavor of our community. And so um, I interviewed Frank last week, and I posted a story um, on our website, and then I shared it on social media. And so this is the performance of our post. We reached 4,200 people, and we drove 214 people, um, or 225 people to our website. Now I could look at the back end of our, uh, of our website on Google and I could see that 2,500 people read that, art, that specific article within a week, which was really cool because those 2,500 people could be anybody, right? And so we know that one of those people were um, the, the editor at the log, and this actually was posted online today. The editor at the log saw the story about the H2O bus and decided to do a story at the log, so the next time the print edition comes out, Look out for the story about um, the H2O bus. It's not a water taxi. But, but Frank might give you a ride if you ask. No, Excuse me. The water taxi was a great idea way back when. We used to have Harbor Hopper. Yeah, we, I have heard about the Harbor Hopper. I haven't been around long enough to, to experience it. But I know when some of the projects come online that that might be an idea that's more suitable for the harbor once there's a little bit more foot traffic um, with the hotel on the peninsula. And, um, well, if you take people from like Whale's Tail over to Yolanda's, that'd be a good route. That's what they did, is it 
progressive dinner. Mm -hmm. yeah. So each course in a different restaurant. Yeah. yeah, that sounds like a great idea for down the road. I would, I'd love to promote it if we had it. Um, another post is just a, it's just a Facebook post about um, Harbor Mart and their pastrami sandwiches. Um, just to raise awareness about, you know, not everybody knows there's a pastrami sandwich at Harbor Mart, which, if you haven't had it, is delicious. Um, as you can see in the comments, Shani Brown um, said she wants to try one of them. Jennifer said she wants one. And Rudy said he's going to go in tomorrow and buy one. And then we commented back, hey, let us know how it is. And I've actually seen um, other Facebook posts where somebody would go in and say, oh yeah, thanks for the recommendation. So that's just another way to raise awareness for our businesses. So in addition to individual Facebook posts, we also post events on social media. And Facebook events are a little bit different than posts. It looks like a post to you, but on Facebook, on the back end, it looks a little bit different. So this is the back end of our um, of our event post. And so we did a, um, a post about the Children's Parade. This was yesterday. It reached 1,900 people in less than 24 hours. 108 people said they're either gonna, they're going to attend or they're interested in attending. Um, our, fourth of, our Fourth of July fireworks by the sea, we posted that a couple of weeks ago and 66,000 people um, have, has seen the post and 3,700 people are either interested or they plan to attend. And uh, as you can see, there are some other events that we post um, in the past in the past month. So that's a really good tool. It's a good barometer for us to see what the foot traffic is going to be like. As we've been doing this in the past year, we've noticed the Facebook posts that have a really high interest. We tend to notice on the day of the event there actually is a lot of traffic. So by that indication, you know, obviously our fireworks by the sea is going to be well attended. You probably don't need a Facebook post to know about that, but there's some other ones like the Celebration of Wales where we noticed there was a lot of interest and it drove a lot of traffic that day. Did you have a question? I uh, was just saying a lot of people from the mobile home park drive their golf carts in the parade, so I wouldn't send or just call it the children's parade. Uh, people ride bicycles and they do their golf carts. It opens up the whole neighborhood to everybody. Yeah, I've had the I've had the privilege of being um, there the last couple of years, and I do recognize that. And that's something that we'll take a look at. Maybe not calling it just strictly a children's parade, but I do know that there are a fair amount of kids that attend. But fam maybe it's the Fourth of July um, family parade. Yeah. Family parade. Thanks for that suggestion. That's a great suggestion. A little bit more, um, you know, back end Facebook event posts. We have 30, 38,000 people interested in the Celebration of Wales Festival. 2,500 people responded saying that they were interested or they planned to attend. And then down here at the very bottom, you'll see the Parade of Lights last year reached more than a quarter million people. 17,000 people either said they wanted to attend or planned to attend. And I get really excited about the people saying that they're interested or plan to attend because that while there's 17,000 people, yeah. one, you know, one person can represent, um, you know, a family, right? So, 17,000 could be, you know, double or triple that. So that's great. And then one more thing. So about Facebook. So we get we get to follow other pages and see how they're doing. And what I've done um, through our um, Facebook account is I monitor some of the other bigger um, tourism. Um, Facebook pages. And the first one is the Ventura County Coast. That's the Ventura County Lodging Association, and they're responsible for um, promoting the um, Port Wainini, Camarillo, o um, Oxnard, and Ventura. And they have 41,000 followers. There's Visit Oxnard, who has 31,000 followers. Um, Ventura Harbor, naturally, because they're right up the road. I like to follow them to see what they're doing. And then Channel Island Sport Fishing, who actually has the largest Facebook account in our harbor. And then there's us with, now we're about at 6,000. But the really cool thing about this, about this slide is if you look in the far right, there's engagement this week. And engagement is a measurement of reactions, comments, and shares. And so I, got, I grabbed this screenshot a couple of weeks ago, and it shows our engagement um, in, a, in one week was 11,000 
rea reactions. So that's 11,000 reactions, comments, and shares. And what that and what that tells me is people are seeing our posts, they're liking it, and they're engaging in it. The more that they engage, the more that their friends see it, the more that their friends see it, we're building awareness. So if you look at this slide, Ventura County Post has exponentially more people. They have 2,600 people engaged with their posts. We have 6,000 people, and we have 11,000 people engaged in our posts. Um, visit Oxnard, the same thing. They have 1,300 engagement, and we have 11, and down the road. So it's really exciting to see that people are following us, and they're interested in the harbor. Susan? Um, what gets an engagement? A like? A like, a like, comment, or a share. Okay. A smiley face? <laughs> yeah, a smiley face, a wow, a cry, a shock, Heart. a love, yeah, all of that. Okay. But that's really great. Um, if, any of the, if any of you have managed a social media page, it could be extremely hard and lonely if nobody is engaging with your content. You kind of feel like, why am I doing this? But we're getting a lot of positive feedback um, through our social media. Um, our I want to talk a little bit about our print and digital materials. We have our quarterly brochures that we made available back there on the table. That features um, some of the larger events that are coming up in the next quarter, as well as um, phone numbers for all of our businesses in the harbor. And we have a water bill insert um, as needed. We don't do it every month. There's a sample of it right there on the screen. That goes into the um, marine, the marinas, um, their water bills, as well as the community services district. Um, we provide them inserts that they put in the mail. Um, we do have a monthly email newsletter that we launched with our new website last year. Uh, we send out media releases about our events. We share that on social media. Um, we have a billboard off of Highway 101 that we, um, that we do general advertising for the harbor. Not individual businesses, but just a generic shot that kind of encompasses uh, harbor life. 101 and what? Um, we're going 101 north, and it's it's just past Camarillo. Right. Yeah. I think it's right there. It's been there a long time. Yeah. And we have our print advertising that I'll get into a little bit later, and we have the street banners on the corner of Channel Islands and Victoria, and Channel Islands and Harbor, and we use those street banners to also promote events and not individual businesses. And here's a, here's a sample of, um, of the brochure, the two brochures. Um, last year we had a photo shoot and we updated some of our collateral materials. So these are our last two brochures that we had and then um, a couple of generic um, harbor pictures um, and we used that for our billboard. Um, this is a these um, this slide are, is some news coverage that we've gotten as a result of some of the media releases that we've sent out. Uh, we have an electric vehicle car show that um, received interest last year from the Ventura County Star. We have a, a temporary launch lane at Kitty Beach that that um, Supervisor Zaragoza and the community <coughs> helped um, put together to provide access um, for the the kayaking public and stand up paddle boarders and. Um, last weekend, the BC Star came out and covered our the two the two events that we had at the harbor. We actually got front page news, which was um, definitely positive. And as I mentioned, we, I do take calls um, from the media, whether it's um, event related. If it's a little bit more stickier, then Director Sandoval takes those calls. Um, I do monitor social media to see if there's any concerns um, from people. And I, I do um, work with my coworkers and help respond to those. And we do have a visitor's email that um, people often will eat, um, send us emails and I'll you know, point them in the right direction. So I wanted to um, show you guys a little bit of our uh, website revamp. If you guys hadn't visited um, channelislandsharbor.org prior to June 18 or June 2018, this is what our website looked like. And I, it's a little video, so. Um, by today's digital web standards, our website wasn't that great. It wasn't really visual appealing. Um, it was really hard to access the business directory, which really does a disservice to our harbor businesses. 
If you guys don't know, our harbor businesses are responsible for a little bit more than 80% of our department revenue, so we have a great interest in promoting the harbor businesses and making sure that they succeed. So, as you can see here, this is what it looked like when you accessed the business directory. It wasn't all that great. There wasn't links to all the other businesses. Some of the information was outdated. And then this is the new website that we launched in 18. And this is the same sort of situation where you're looking for businesses. And as you can see here, we made it a lot more visual, um, hopefully a lot more easy to access for, for users. And with this website project, we, can, um, we contracted with Searle Creative. They're a marketing company based out of Ventura. Um, building a website isn't something that I can do, but um, the Harbor Department provided all of the copy and all of the pictures for the website, and they kind of took our mess and made it into a beautiful you know, thing for people to see. And during the course of that process, we had a great opportunity to work with them to have a photo and a video shoot. And so uh, the, the next slide is a video um, that they put together for us that we help promote help that we use to help promote the harbor. opportunity to you know get people to visit it and hopefully discover businesses so as I showed you before with some of those Facebook posts we do have blog posts that we use uh, we do um, post a lot of event information our email newsletter uh, next door and social media and so when you look at web stats you don't look at you don't look at um, you don't compare June to June 18 to May 18 you have to look at the um, you have to compare seasons so when we, um, when we compare how, how we're doing, we look at um, the same time period, just different years. So with June, when you compare June 17 to December, um, to December 17, and June 18 when we launched, um, the rest of you know, 18, overall our website visits went up 52%, um, our new users went up 53%, and new users means just new people to the website, our page views, that's people clicking you know, all over the website, that went up 104%, and our average time on our website went up 33%. So that, that's telling us that people are visiting and engaging with, with our, our website. Well, this may not exactly be your uh, responsibility, but do we have any comparative 
statistics for revenues in those two periods for the businesses in the harbor, well, cumulative revenues? Yeah. I'm sure that we can do that, but it's hard to tie web traffic with revenue because we don't have a way of, like say, you know, Harbor Mart is up 10, 15 percent. It's hard for them to attribute their increase in business to our website. Right, but advertising in general, that is what it is meant to do, is to drive up revenues and, and advertisers do in fact try to tie what they're doing to the revenue. So I think we should give it a shot. Sure, I mean, we could definitely look at the statistics and if, and if revenue did go up in the harbor, I, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be the first person to say it was because of what we're doing, if that makes sense. I just, but it would be interesting right, to yeah. I think that's a great idea, and maybe we will take a look at that. And if revenue did get up, then... <laughs> then yes, it would be worth <laughs> it. Yeah. Well, revenue is up. I mean, we've had a couple, we've had some good, some recent years are good. I know our revenue, we, you know, we get a piece of, of, right. of the revenue. And that's been up, that's been trending up for... And, and you've broken it down into the individual businesses, I assume. We could, we, we haven't, but we could, because we get it from individual, not necessarily the businesses, but like Marina Port and Landing, we get it from the landing. We okay, don't so know you get it how from the major old, less so, uh, Right. We, we get it from the landing. Uh, but I mean, the, the beach, the beach, the, the harbor was just off the hook this summer. It was hot, the water was warm. But our harbor patrol, and that, you know, I kind of get that kind of information, said it's just astounding how many people were, at, were in the harbor and on the beaches last summer. Well, last summer was beautiful and, and sunny. And, you know, yes, and the so water was bad. warm. And, and the economy's good, so I mean, all of that, and, and Jez is doing a great job promoting, but all of that it, it, it lends itself to that. But in answer to your, the, the overall answer is yes, the revenues in the harbor are up and have been trending up for, for a few years. So a couple of years ago, Frank, uh, not Frank, sorry, Steve Binger brought the food trucks down here to Marine Emporium Landing, it was the... Wet Wednesdays. It, wet Wednesdays, right. And uh, it was when the food truck um, movement was really big and they had started it down in Oxnard at Heritage Square and moved it around a couple of times and then didn't really stay there. And um, he did it, I forget how many times, and we were communicating via email and he said, the traffic is falling off, falling off. Why do you think it's falling off? I, I had no idea other than it's a Wednesday and so you're only getting your locals, you're not really getting um, many tourists and stuff like that. And he wasn't doing it, it was seasonal, but it was a long season. So, um, you know, it's really difficult and I don't know, that was fairly decently promoted by Steve. I do, you know, I, you know it's very hard to say what succeeds and what. Well, they, they, they do it in Oxnard. In fact, it's tomorrow. I'm going to go to it because um, they do it. I guess they do it every Friday. So I put it on my calendar. I'm going to go to it and see if there's an organizer. Jed and I talked about it just this week about maybe trying to bring it to the Fisherman's Wharf um, parking lot. A lot of unused parking. <laughs> But, you know, they're just something, just something to drive. Yeah. And then you're not competing with the other restaurants. Right. I mean, that was the other thing. I don't know if Steve was catching blowback because people would come and eat at the trucks instead of going well, to Well, actually, what he yeah. did, you know, what he did is yeah. that the restaurants offered their spaces, like Waterside offered their patio for anybody using the trucks if they would buy a beer or a drink or something like that. And I think um, Seafresh did the same thing. So uh, I don't, it, you know, there weren't that many restaurants to, to compete with at a time. Uh, but uh, they do it at the best, the most successful one is, I think, the one they have the mall in the Ventura by the trade. Yeah, but that one when we Excuse got me, here, Susan said it worked out real well for the restaurants. Yeah, and the thing there. is, like, we would go over there. Normally, we would, we live on Ocean, we wouldn't go over in Alpe. And we'd go to the food court, and I go, ugh, I don't want to eat anything here. And I'd go to Sea Fresh and order. You know, where I wouldn't have normally eaten out. Like a lost leader. Get, yeah. get them out. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's, yeah. and the, the food trucks is something that <laughs> the, the lessee actually coordinated. And yeah, he, you know, he with did. that, if he ended up doing it again, we'd love to promote, help, you know, be that promotion yeah. for him. Well, I, I mean, I think you should talk going. to him about what happened because he told me he was really bitterly disappointed and he was mm -hmm. going to discontinue it because there just wasn't any traffic. I think it, it went from one food truck event 
in the area to one every day all over yeah. the area. This is too much. But now it's falling off. Right, but it got diluted. Yeah, yeah it did get yeah. diluted. So we're going to try this great plan instead of building apartments. I love to tear into the apartments, but uh, one other thing that hasn't been touched is uh, motorhome traffic between the, the launch ramp and uh, Spud Nuts. They're asking 65 bucks a night. They don't provide outhouses or dumpsters. They're really proud of their staff. I mean, if well, they we would brought that up to you, get it reasonable. If they and would, you were, no, he was going to. Okay, yeah. that's not if they get it reasonable. Stand up all could follow up with you after the presentation. <laughs> that's lost revenue, Are and you? that could help the harbor taxi. Is Bring there any from that harbor taxi? Of the the we tried to get the harbor taxi, and we have to call and wait forever and stuff like that. No. I mean, the harbor taxi is sort of history. No, no revenue is dedicated to advertising. Um, harbor camping. Not. No. No. And, well, the, know, and, and, and I've talked yeah. to Mark about the fact that the and fact that we lost the grant and we're never going to get it back. And what we've got over there on Victoria should be turned into a mobile home uh, site because it's on the water and we could advertise hookups. And, and we shouldn't give that space away to some out-of-town developer. But that's another story. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and move on with the presentation. Yeah. There you go. Uh, um, this is the, the first part of the year compared to 18. Overall, our website visits are up 82%. New users are up 77. Our page views are up 120. And our average time spent on our website is ticking up too. Um, I didn't. I'm not. I didn't share the June information with everybody. But the June, June of this year is really interesting compared to June of last year, because that was when we got a really big spike because of our website relaunch. And I was really concerned if we were going to maintain like our um, increase in, in visits. And we're actually up 75 percent in June compared to last year. So that's really positive. Um, this is, we kind of narrowed it down a little bit more um, when you look at June 18 um, through December 18 compared to the year before. I broke it up into four categories. Again, going back to the first slide in the presentation, we want to promote businesses, events, news, and services. Um, traffic to our business pages went up 168%, 141%. More people looked at our events. And news got a big um, bump, and our services did as well. So that's a really positive. Um, I know people like to compare us to Ventura Harbor because of our geographic location. And um, Jennifer does a really great job up there in Ventura Harbor. She's been around for 10 years, has a very established uh, marketing program, and um, I think they do a really great job. But when you compare our our, our web stats, with their web stats, um, June 18, when we launched um, through se September, you can see that they had 2,000 more visitors to their website, and they had about 20,000 extra page views. And while they're um, beating us a little bit, I think it's really great news because our program is in its infancy right now, and they have a really nice, well-oiled machine, and we're you know we're getting there as as the years pass. So excuse me, yeah. Uh, I noticed the other night on the news they said where they were taking all the commercial boats over to Ventura Harbor and pushing the private boats over to Channel Islands. Wouldn't it be worth it for Channel Islands? It's such a, it's a better harbor entrance and uh, wouldn't it be worth it for us to make efforts to keep the commercial over here? That would help the harbor. They're history. enlarging the slips to accommodate, I think it's the shrimp boats, because they're really maximizing their shrimping fleet, which they say is their bread and butter. I guess that's not Usually much fun. it's the uh, uh, squid, right? A squid, I'm sorry. I knew that. Squid, yes. Yeah, well, I mean, what, what Ventura Harbor's doing is they're actually starting to focus more on, on commercial right. of, of the commercial industry and less on recreation. Well, we've got about 30% a vacancy rate among the marinas. All the marinas are handled under separate leases, with the exception of the commercial fishing uh, landing, which is right next to 
uh, the Marine Emporium landing. The Marine Emporium landing for the size slips that can accommodate the fishing fleet were almost full. We've got empties, but they're small slips. Um, what, what my preference is, is to have the marinas capitalize on Ventura Harbor's loss of recreational slips and get those boats over here. And honestly, I mean, those are the boats that'll start, you know, uh, going to the businesses, eating dinner, and, and we've got the excess capacity. And so, without a doubt, the marinas in the harbor, in this harbor, have an opportunity to grab boats that are getting displaced out of Ventura, recreational boats, not the commercial fishing. I think we ought to uh, concentrate on recreation, less on, on, on commercial fishing, let them concentrate on commercial fishing, and, and, and you know, let yeah, us handle the recreation. And we've got the excess capacity. Wouldn't there be more revenue for Channel Islands if we concentrate on the commercial? Not necessarily. I mean, the way that the leases work, from our perspective, is, and, and it's pretty standard in the industry, we get 25% of their gross. It's between 20 and 25, depending upon how old their lease is, which is pretty significant. And, uh, and, and, and that's just that standard. I think up and down the coast, that's standard. So the marinas do generate about half of our revenue. And, 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 and if we're meeting with the marina organization and, and I'm trying to help them all I can to fill their slips. And, and I'll speak at the end of what Jed's saying because I'll give you kind of the overall picture as to where I think we're, we need to push the harbor. And, and it's not just about promotion and marketing and answer some of the questions I've heard. But, uh, but I'll let Jed finish. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that is an opportunity, no doubt about it. But I think for the recreational work is more so. Uh, our website, with the results that we showed you, we submitted it to a couple of contests. Um, the Harbor Department was recognized by the California Public Information Officers Association for our website redesign. Congratulations. Wasn't, thank you. It wasn't really about the image of the website, which is great. It was more about the, the, our ability to display the additional web traffic. That was our objective, to raise awareness, and we succeeded at least um, the second half of last year. In Searle Creative, the the company that helped us, they won um, an award, an Addy Award, which is a very prestigious award in the advertising world for uh, the, their their part in redesigning the website. And that was that award was more for the visual um, component yeah. of the website. Um, on for uh, results on our social media, um, this is through May 31st. We have 5,400 followers. Um, we've reached um, 15 million people in the two and a half years. 120,000 people engage with our content, which is a really good um, metric. And we've had 11,000 referrals to our website. On Instagram, uh, 5,100 followers. We've reached a million people. 100,000 people have been engaged with our content. And that's driven 600 people to our website. And then our Twitter, which is our, the kind of low-performing uh, low performing social media platform, um, we have 511 followers, we've reached a quarter million people, um, 5,000 people are engaged, and that's driven 350 people to our website. Do we um, ask people to send us, uh, to forward us, oh, I don't know how it works, because I don't do this, um, when they post on Instagram, if they come here, and then they post photos of the places they've been and the things that yeah. they've done, we, do we see that? Um, I monitor social media. I can see those pictures with one if I'm following them. Two, they. But you use, have to be following a specific person. Right? Well, not necessarily. Two, if they use the hashtag Channel Islands Harbor, okay. I'm able to um, go through that and and identify pictures. If there's a good picture that we like to repost. I ask for permission, then I repost it. And we also um, um, we go through geotags. Um, like say you're at the harbor or you say you're at the harbor. I can look through geotags and if I identify a picture that I like or that we like, we, we, we post that. Um, a lot of the pictures that we, we, uh, that we post on social media are other people's um, pictures um, and we think that's advantageous because it shows real genuine experiences of people um, and what they're doing at the harbor. Um, I can't be on a kayak. I don't think Mark wants me out on a kayak and stand up paddleboarding and parasailing and doing all that, but we are um, able to see who's at the harbor, who's um, sharing on social media, and then reposting their experience. And in, the, in social media language, it's called um, user-generated content. So. so one more question. 
everything I do these days, I get a survey afterwards. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the whole wide world now wants to know what I think of what I bought, what I where sure. I went, what I ate, and all that. I mean, the used to be nobody, nobody <laughs> cared. Now everybody wants me to fill out a survey. So do we have a survey? Um, that people could take if they come here and um, find out whether they had a good time, what they did when they were here, even uh, if we just did a random sample? We don't have a specific survey, but a good tool that we do get a monitor is Yelp. A lot of people use Yelp and uh, leave reviews about businesses. Uh, yeah. So if you look at Yelp or even TripAdvisor, that'll give a lot of good feedback um, of visitors. Actually, with TripAdvisor, um, we've gotten so many great reviews over the past year. We get like a gold star award um, for for positive um, user, um, positive positive visitor experiences, and we've actually received that award for uh, five years in a row. So on the on TripAdvisor, individual businesses, a lot of people are before they go to a restaurant, they'll read the Yelp reviews, and so that's really a way um, that you can monitor that. Um, and I think that's the more appropriate route to go because you could say, how did you feel about your visit at the harbor? But they could have done a variety of things, so it's really good to see um, what their experience was like at that individual business. That was a good question. Um, this is just a graph, a chart of our social media growth since we launched in February 17. Um, positive growth um, throughout the months. Um, one thing that we did when we launched the website, and we did start an email uh, marketing newsletter. Um, it's a really basic newsletter. We send it out monthly. Um, there's one component that stays the same, and that's Director Sandoval's message. Um, it's, it's been really great that Director Sandoval has been wanting to interact with the community as well as post a, um, a monthly message of what's going on in the harbor. And then the next two things that we feature on the on the newsletter are events that are going around in the harbor and we'll we'll share links to anything else that we've um, posted throughout the, the previous month. Um, right now we have a little bit more than 300 subscribers. Um, we're making it a goal this year to increase the, um, the email base of people who subscribe to our newsletter. Um, actually we're going to start um, this weekend, Director Sandoval is going to have a booth at the Farmer's Market. Um, the Harbor Department will have a booth every Sunday, all summer at the Farmer's Market. So if you want to talk to Director Sandoval um, in July or after that, there'll be um, other staff members who are there to talk about projects and what's going on in the Harbor. Um, one of the cool things about our subscribers is our open rate. Um, and this, this is a metric that shows how many people are actually opening our emails. And as you can see, it's well above 40%. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever had to do email marketing, but I think like the benchmark is usually 25 to 30%. So the people who are um, subscribing to our email are actually really engaged in opening it, which is a, a really positive thing for us because we're posting this information and people are you know, consuming it and, and learning more about the hardware. Um, in terms of advertising, I mentioned before we updated our photo library last year that we've been able to inc incorporate into our um, existing advertising materials. We updated our um, water, the water bills that we sent out, our quarterly brochure, um, the billboard on 101. Uh, we do run about 20 print ads annually. That covers um, some of the larger events in the harbor as well as some programs that go on during the summer. Um, and we estimate about a million people see um, see those ads based on the um, the print um, the print publication circulation. So we're able to measure that. Um, we have six billboards that we run annually, and 10 million people see those. And we're frequently published in four daily newspapers and 12 online publications. We track the news and we see who's you know, publishing our our information. Um, these are again some examples. Just to give you an example, this was the old the old brochure. I think it. I think this is Port Royal in the picture. I think this used to be Port Royal, right? Yes. So we went ahead and updated. You know, we have some updated pictures of the harbor. Um, so we're really proud of those. And then mo moving forward, um, if you guys. 
do get it before. We're really here to raise awareness about the harbor. We want people to um, either come back or discover it and support our businesses and, and have a great time here. Um, we're, we're definitely interested in exploring partnerships to host additional events. Um, like Mark, um, Director Sandoval mentioned, we do want to get a, maybe a food truck component down at, at Fisherman's Wharf. Um, we want to partner with businesses um, in the harbor and to continue to promote them. And we definitely want to keep enhancing our website with more information about our businesses, news, programs, and services. And so that wraps up my presentation. If anybody has any questions or suggestions, um, I'm definitely open to them. I know Mark wants, um, wants to close out and, and mention a few things as well. Yeah. How, how do people reach you? I can see those things. Do you have like an email? I do have an email. Okay. And I can um, email it <laughs> um, uh, after, for yeah, for everybody after. Just um, put it in the newsletter. Yeah. yeah. I just want passive advertising. We'll be like coming out at the beginning of July, so just put put your address in the news. Okay. Passive advertising, with, you know, social media, the internet. You sit there and do it. What else are we doing? I mean, you know, we we get you know, we love coastal living, you know, and they have featured places, even you know, what's that triple A well, feature. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, they feature houses here, but not. You know, on Ocean, we're over on Ocean Drive, and they had some little bungalow that we almost got. Over on Sunset. Yeah, on Sunset. But I mean, how about, do you have a plan that you get out and try to market this to, you know, national? When they do these yeah, publications, do. and they're featuring beach cities, Sunset. and we're not mentioned. Well, Westways, they publish a calendar. Yeah, I Every mean, month, in, in so Westways, it's easy to get in Westways. And in Westways, the, um, yeah, the right. Central Coast British Car Club show is, is featured in this um, this month's edition of Westways. Um, in terms of attracting um, attention from national audiences, yeah. our partners at the Oxnard Convention and Visitors Bureau um, contracts with um, a public relations firm, okay. and they're really good about um, that public relations firm works with the travel writers, okay. and when OCBB is working with those national travel writers, when they bring them to Oxnard, they're not going to they're not going to pass up the harbor because a big part of their marketing plan is marketing the harbor as well. Right. So we do have a little bit of overlap, okay. but with OCBB, they're really looking at Oxnard as a whole. Do you we're, work with them? On yeah. 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 As well, I don't work. I don't work on their team, no, but we but partner together on certain things. Yeah. And I believe Mrs. Olson's last month, two months ago, was featured in West Wales. Mm -hmm. Who was? Mrs. Mrs. Olson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And of course, as if they need more business, but it was a really yeah. Good, yeah. It, it was a really good article, um, and they were featured. Hey, you can promote our, our harbor in '63. They filmed Mad Mad World out here, so people want to go. See, oh, you want you? people to come to the harbor, then you tell the Board of Supervisors to put their first cannabis dispensary in the harbor. <laughs> that will drive people. Oh, yeah, really. The wrong kind. Hey, helping us take our way from the harbor. Well, you know what? Can you imagine who goes to these places? People like me, really? 76 years old, people with back aches. I mean, it's a yeah. real cross section. You yeah. have the wrong idea we'll about people who are in those cannabis dispensaries. Taking them away from pot wine, maybe. Yeah. Well, no, we wouldn't do that, but I mean, you know, believe me, the, they're going to be opening in all of the cities because everybody needs the money. So I did that. The reason I wanted to, to you know, tail it on, on Jed's presentation is because especially for those of you that have been to all of these there, there was kind of a method to my madness if you've come to all of them and, and I started out and I, I talked about the finances of the harbor and the, and the major takeaway there is that we're not rich I don't have a ton of money I wish I did not I I wish we did I wish the harbor department did we are an enterprise the county's in really good shape but they are like well that's the county you need to you need to manage just as a business in the harbor and and we right now are in pretty in, in not in good shape financially and part of that has to do with the fact that their, their city the city has, has uh, is also in, in bad shape and and it's kind of a perfect storm we've taken on some of the expenses that they couldn't and and that's hurt us and and so when you talk about things like the water taxi there's no doubt about it we need a lot we should have a water taxi 
but but and, and but a water tax is not going to pay for itself. In fact, that's why I think it died is because the operator was trying to make money or they're trying to at least break even on water taxing. They're not going to work unless they're subsidized. I think that it's the Harbor Department's job to subsidize a water taxi. I think it's the Harbor Department's job to subsidize other transportation. We've got ideas, but I don't have the money to make them happen. And so my first, my first presentation of the Harbor Academy was a finances, just so we understood. I don't have unlimited funds. And, and, and the, the, another or a couple of big reasons that we don't is because I've got two very prominent parcels here in the Harbor that are producing no revenue for me. And that's the end of Peninsula, and that's Fort Fisherman's Wharf. If we had those up and running, that would be worth probably $2 million more to the Harbor Department, which would enable me to advertise more, to have a water taxi. I mean, I, I think we ought to have a shuttle between here and downtown, great yes. idea, between here and Ventura Harbor. Let somebody stay in a hotel here and go and, and take a shuttle to, to there so they can go to those restaurants there, have a couple cocktails, and not have to worry about a DUI on the way back. Let's get the this get shut. It all takes money. The second thing is that and I'm not a marketing guy, I'm an accountant by you know by, by profession, and I've been running waterfronts for most of my career. But what I what what I what I believe is that when somebody, when I can get somebody, when I or we can get somebody to Channel Islands Harbor, we want to give them a good impression. We don't want them just to be there one time. We want them to go home in LA or Bakersfield or Fresno and tell their friends about it. Man, I just visited this great harbor. What is the first thing they see when they get here? They see Fisherman's Wharf. It's kind of embarrassing to get new people to the harbor and see Fisherman's Wharf. We all know what's going on with Fisherman's Wharf, but we all know we've got to change that. And, 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 you know, whatever we change, whatever it becomes, what it's got to be is something better than it is. Because the first impression they're going to get, they're going to go back and say, wow, I spent my weekend here and this is, you know. Yeah. Now, maybe they'll make it to Emporium Landing and enjoy themselves. But we're giving a bad impression when Peninsula looks like it does with a beat up, dying hotel, when, when the whale's tails close, mm -hmm. when Fisherman's Wharf looks the way it is. We can't be giving people that kind. So it's hard for me to tell Jed, Jed, get out there and get the, you know, tens of thousands of people to the harbor when this is the impression they're gonna get. So it's all kind of part of the same, the same objective that we've got. I've got to get these parcels built. That's my challenge, that's my job. I've got to, I've got to have guest stocks at every one of these new facilities. I've got, we'll, we'll have guest stocks at, at the end of Peninsula. Whale's Tales will be open. You know, they'll have a guest stock. That's when you not only can have a water taxi, that's when you get the people coming to the harbor for the first time, having a lot to do, renting electric boats, getting, you know, being able to go to different venues in the same harbor, that's when we can fill marina slips, that's when, my, that's when more money comes in for me to do more things, to, to advertise and promote more, to, to do those things like the shuttles. It's all part of the same thing, which is why when I did the Harbor Academy, I talked about finances, I talked about the development and where we are on those, you know, and, and then, then I talked about um, Harbor Patrol, which is a different issue, which is another challenge of us, it, you know, it, hurts our finances as well. But, it, but it's not like we're not paying attention to this. I mean, I get where we gotta go. Development's slow. You know, we're, we're right around the corner from, from uh, the lease with frescoes. That should happen in July. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're there. They've given us everything we need. Um, again, that's gonna be a couple years for them to build it out. The thing's an absolute mess inside. But at least we're moving in that direction. If I had the, that, that restaurant open, if I had, once we have the hotel built, if we can do something with Fisherman's Wharf, now it's a vibrant harbor to market. Everything rises. The, the businesses are all doing great. People want to come here because it's the place to be. I know where we've got to go. It's getting there. And, 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 and the promotion and marketing is a big part of that. I just want a better thing to be able to promote a market. Yeah, I'd love to get people throngs of people here from LA, but we've got it, we've got to present a good harbor for them to go home and, and, and tell their friends and then the next week and get 30 of their friends here to do it. And so I know it's all part of the same thing, but 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 know that we recognize that. Um, the, another question was asked, so so I mean that's my soapbox. Another question was the RV uh, the RV uh, we you know one of the, the one of the messages I wanted to deliver, I did deliver 
um, with, with our, uh, our development, Harbor Academy, was visioning. So we are going to, I mean, we're, we're, we're within the next month or two, in fact, we've already got a, a, a meeting with the Lessees Association to start the visioning process for Victoria Avenue primarily, but I'm bringing the other two parcels, X3 and F, well, what we've been calling F3 at the end of the peninsula, into the visioning. Uh, should there be an RV park in the harbor? That's the question. Um, where would it be? Obviously, Victoria Avenue makes the most sense. It takes a lot of real estate. I mean, an RV park takes a lot of real estate. Is that the best use? I don't know. Um, the other thing I don't think we play up enough is the islands. The island packers, they, they, they run out of here, but most of their business is out of Ventura Harbor. I'd love to bring them here, but we've got to create what we can do. They've got to have docks. They've got to have parking. Is that Victoria Avenue? They I don't asked know. to go to Victoria many times. Well, I know, I know, but we again, that's part of our visioning. What do we do with Victoria Avenue? You know, I can't, you know, we've got to rebuild the fishing landing. The fishing landing needs to be where it is. That takes a lot of parking. I mean, fishing's hot right now. You come almost every day of the week, that, fit, that parking lot's full. So I can't utilize that parking. They can't share it with the, with the island packers. So we've got to create all that. If we do that, then I don't have space for an RV park, if an RV park makes sense. The less Fisherman's Wharf goes away. I mean, there's a lot of things, <laughs> there's a lot of things that could happen, and, and Victoria Avenue is, is the place where it could happen, but everything takes space, and, and an RV park with 60 spaces, nobody will develop it. It, it needs, oh, we actually have, we need about 120, 120 parking on this spaces. side, though. Right. Parking on this side, though. The Island Packers goes out of here. They, they can't, I've talked to them. They, they, they have trouble right now with their parking because if you look at Sunday, which is a big island day, you've got the farmers market. Yeah, the farmers market, and you've got and you've got the Emporium Landing that does very well on Sundays. They you you try to you try to put the Island Packers on top of that. There actually isn't enough parking in that area. And then we have events. We have a car show that eats up you know a part of that lot. So, so that is not a solution for the island. Well, that's not every week. And we've kind of talked know. about that, though, and, and, and we've had those discussions. But, but recognize that we are having those discussions, and, uh, and, and, and we do recognize it. In my mind, I want a better harbor to be able to promote because I think that that's what improves all of our lives. It, it improves all the harbor. It gives you guys more things to do. It brings people out here. Um, we just got to do it right, make sure the parking's sufficient, and then and then let Jed just go promote the heck out of it because because then we have something to really promote, really sell, something we're all proud of, and and we're moving in that direction. The hotel should start. We should start the demo in October. Again, that's a two and a half year process. So right now, that that hotel won't be done until the beginning of 2022. But it is the, it, 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 we have to go there because because. I live on Peninsula. I don't want to take any of my family that visits me to the end of Peninsula because it's embarrassing to go by that hotel. You know, in, in two and a half years, we're going to have something. Yeah, go you know, stay at the hotel, go to the hotel. We'll have a restaurant, we'll have guest stocks. I mean, it all works. It all becomes the, the Channel Islands that those of you long time, time timers remember when it was really happening, restaurants everywhere, guest stocks everywhere, things you can do, you can get to from the water, we have our shuttles, I mean, it's all part of the same thing, and, and we recognize that, it's just, it's just, it's just getting us there.